Hi guys, welcome to the Fair Coat No Knickers podcast, sponsored by 101. Um, we're here today talking to Owen Sheehan from Country Munch. Um, so excited for this episode. He's like 23 and like this entrepreneur that's just killing it. Um, so yeah, I hope you get as much out of it that I did. <laughs> Hi Owen, so thanks so you? much for coming on to the, my, the show today. My pleasure, thank you for having me. Fab, okay, well I suppose, um, I suppose the reason I asked you to come on was um we went to an event together up in dublin about three years ago yeah um yeah. i had my own little business idea at the time and i remember you were there and you were saying to me yeah you know i'm starting this food business like and actually at the time you were like you know like like home cooking basically yeah. for the masses and i was kind of like give me your honest opinion was, at the time do you think it's gonna work i was just like okay like, <laughs> okay well, do you know and i was just kind of like i didn't really know i suppose what exactly were you doing? I was like, everyone can cook. I didn't either, to be fair. Yeah, so but you was, had the idea. And like, yeah. I suppose, then obviously I've seen you grow so much over the last three years that I was like, we'll check in. We'll see yeah. how we're getting on. <laughs> but I suppose that brings me on to kind of my first question. Okay. Is like, how did you develop a concept and an idea that you had into an actual business? Yeah. Um, I think it was supernatural. Like okay. there was never a time where I sat down and was like, okay, I'm, I'm starting a business. Yeah. Um, I went to college. I'm a qualified chemical engineer. Right. In college. Uh, like really focused on nutrition and food. I was always in sports, big into yeah, rugby yeah, yeah. and uh, got into bodybuilding. So that kind of made me have to mm-hmm. look at my nutrition. Mm-hmm. I, I was never a massive, never really into cooking or anything like that. Yeah. It was only when I kind of became like 16 or 17, I had to just for sport and yeah. for, for bodybuilding. Mm-hmm. Started looking at it like that, uh, started cooking more, started putting it on social media. I, I had no no following at all. So were you putting it on social media as you were cooking? It stuff? was kind of just like I would put up what my dinners would be like for the week. So yeah. I, I would put up like training clips, training clips, because I wanted to be a fitness person. Okay. When I was in bodybuilding. I wanted to be like a sponsored athlete. That was yeah, that was yeah, the yeah. goal. Okay. And I would throw up like my meals and then people would like boom, boom questions like, oh, what, what, are, you, what, what are you having for breakfast? Yeah, yeah, and I'm yeah. like, forget about that. And this yeah. is me squatting. This is me benching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're cool, cool, cool. What, what, are you, what are you eating for dinner? So yeah. I was like, Jesus, there actually might be something here. Okay. Um, didn't think much of it. Uh, used to prep all my own meals. Mm-hmm. Uh, a neighbor or a friend came to me saying, I have no time. Will you cook my meals for me? Like how was that? Did they did they just come over and say, he "Listen, I like me, what you're he, doing." He sent me the he resent me the message, a screenshot of the message he first yeah. sent. He's from home. Uh, he just saw me cooking my meals, and he worked like shift work. He said, "Like, listen, I'm spending loads of money on food. I'm trying yeah. to lose weight. I need to do what you're doing. I just don't have time. Will you do it for me?" Mm-hmm. So I said, "No." I was like, "I'm in college." <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, "This isn't. I'm not doing this for yeah. to make money." Uh, so he came back again, and a friend, another friend of his, asked the same question as well. So I was doing like eight meals for myself and then I was like, okay, Grant, I'll do it. Because they offered me, yeah. they offered me like, I think I charged like a ten or a meal. It was good Amazing. money. yeah. So I know I was like 17, I was in college, I was broke, I had no job. So I was like, Grant, this is a little bit of Batch income cooks. to spend yeah. for Thursday night when I go out drinking. Yeah. Uh, so I used to do those meals. So like eight became 12, mm-hmm. 12 became 16. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, just chewed up on, on social media. I, I I didn't I had no following back then. I mean okay. I, I wasn't I wasn't uh, mm-hmm. I, I still don't consider myself anything like that. But uh, it was never with the intention to get more orders. It was okay. just I suppose in the back of my mind I was always like I want to be a sponsor of that league. Yeah. I knew the right thing to do was just to be consistent with posting blah course, blah blah yeah. on all platforms. Um, and then it kind of just stemmed from there. More people came on asking. Uh, I loved it. Like I did love, it and I, yeah. I kind of realized that the more I did college, the more I realized that I hated engineering. Really? I was good. Did at you it. finish it out? I finished it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like, I, I was never bad at it. I was good at studying. And do you think did that contribute anything to it, what it you did. know now? Or it did. Are you yeah. Like... I mean, not, not I suppose in in a food or cooking aspect, but confidence. Yeah. Um, I suppose like the deadlines mm-hmm. and work ethic. Yeah. And public speaking. Okay. We had so many presentations Amazing. year four. Yeah. And I that was my that was my thing. Like really? I was so you bad. You were just up there the, doing your thing. So bad like, at the thing, yeah. but I got a good group from Fab. FYP. Yeah. So to be fair to the lads, they were geniuses. They would Amazing. do all the dirty work. And then you were give it the, to me and I would go up with my showman. jazz hands and yeah and sell it. Fantastic. So it, it worked out beautifully. But okay. I, in hindsight, yeah, it definitely it definitely did. Okay. Um and then I suppose like what are kind of food trends and stuff? Like are you 
going along with food trends right now at Country no. Munch or you're just doing what you see yeah. fit? Um, off from day one, yeah. the aim of the game was to not be a fad diet or yeah. a food trend business. Mm -hmm. The food we do is like simple, wholesome, home-cooked food. Yeah. The food that my mother used to make, the food my grandmother used to make. It's funny that you say that because that's what you said to me in the car three years ago, that's even though you didn't from, know what you were doing. From day one, yeah. It's, yeah. That's all I had from day one. Amazing. It was like, this is food that I know yeah. is good, food that I like to eat. So if I like it and I know it's good, then I'll sell it. You know, okay. if if I don't believe if I was doing if I was to jump on a trend, yeah, and do like you know low carb or keto yeah, yeah, meals, yeah. I'd probably be able to sell them because yeah. there's a market for them. Mm -hmm. And maybe on the line there will be a branch yeah. where I do do a vegan menu or something like that. I, I'm nothing yeah. against that, but I just knew that uh, this is what I know. This yeah. is what I'm passionate about. It's of food course. that I'm happy eating. Okay. And uh, I think that's more believable than when you are yeah. marketing or whatever. You're you're, you're authentic. That's the authentic. You know, people can see that this fellow legit actually likes to eat that food. And you probably don't know that I know, and this is kind of weird, but Class. the fact I that you're this. in um you're in the Midwest. Uh, yeah. Mentoring. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, explain to me. I suppose maybe explain to people what that is. Yeah. And you're the youngest member. In there. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I suppose what has that done for you and your business um yeah that was a funny one i only joined january i have i have a mentor colin o'brien okay he owns a big food business in limerick and he kind of took me under his wing uh last year he just invited me as a guest this year yeah i mean it, what it is is it's like it's south monsters uh might be the biggest it's one of the, the main ones yeah. anyway uh networking groups so okay. there's like 60 businesses we all meet once a week. Not all 60 of us, as many you can. Usually it's about 30 or 40 per group. Cool. All meet in, a, in this one big room, big like uh, U-shaped seating arrangements. You're all looking at each other. Everyone gets a minute to say what they do. Uh, someone will present and then you just network and talk to each other. But it's non, it's non evasive, you know, it's very okay. easy going. Uh, so the ethos of the U-shaped thing. Everyone is included, everyone's looking at each other. It's not. It's, so it's strategically. Yeah, oh, yeah, it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went to one, and I, I mean, I was clearly that one out. Like, these are all, like, people, you know, established. who are established in business. Yeah. They're to make contacts. They're there, you know, to increase their business. And I came in and was like, how's it going? My name's Owen. I'm a chef. <laughs> uh, and then they loved it. And they were like, you're the fellow who owns it, John. He's, he's a John giant. Loftus, yeah, yeah. He also, you know, another great guy. He kind of took fun. me under his wing. Yeah. Uh, and he was like, listen, you should stay on board. And, you know, you've loads, like, I'd balls of enthusiasm yeah. and just energy you know Am and that, that kind of hits a room and yeah. it has been super beneficial you know the How contacts you meet because it's like 60 different people in 60 different businesses yeah what i'm doing like we do lots of catering i do demos okay. i go into corporates okay. so that's 60 opportunities to go in and do an event or even at that like everyone's so nice in there the idea is like you're you're literally trying to help everyone else out so i'll give my pitch to me like this week blah 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 i'm we did this, we did this into Northern Trust. They did a demo for the employees yeah. for a wellness event. Yeah. Someone might go away, they might hear someone saying, oh, we need someone for a wellness event. They'll say, oh yeah, Owen Sheehan, I know him. Like the okay. referrals I get is huge. So really there is a lot of value in being in Massive. that group. Yeah, yeah, I okay. definitely see it, yeah, for sure. Yeah, because... And, and you know what, in business, I think it can be very isolated, definitely. especially if you own a business, yeah. you know? You spend a lot of time by yourself. So this is like an hour, an hour and a half of the week where you're with people who are in the exact same position as yeah. you. Like I often go in there with no intentions, just to chat, yeah. just to meet everyone. Like, oh, how's yeah. it going? How's your week? And do you you kind of bounce ideas off people big then? Time. Yeah, yeah, big time. They'll kind of yeah, because yeah. I think like you know people heading into business and stuff like it's hard to get mentors or what do mentors mean or yes, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It kind of where do I even start? Like so, like let's say if somebody didn't have the means to join a group like that, yeah, um, how would they decide who who they would like? To mentor them or yeah I, like my biggest thing is is your network like i yeah. put such an emphasis on 100%. that from a young age I, I don't know how i became so ingrained on that but like mm -hmm. i heard this thing is like the five people you spend your time with is the byproduct that you will be I love that's that. that's paraphrased now I love there that. is some nice way but yeah basically like your circle will will determine who you are so if yeah. you're hanging around with like negative people who are constantly bashing him bashing her mm -hmm that will you know ultimately affect you like and you will kind of have right. that mind frame whereas if you're in a room with people and being like this week i'm doing this i'm doing this yeah it makes just, you yeah like optimistic people yeah. it kind of sends you out and like geez yeah he's doing this I'm, yeah. I'm gonna go out and get that as well yeah so for sure i mean i i made the conscious decision to i won't say x people out of my life but yeah. if i saw like i'm not a big drinker yeah. so when i was in college 
there was you know it, there's different cliques there's different groups like I, I was always in the sporty clique you yeah. know I was friends with people in the drinking groups mm-hmm. but when it got to the stage of third and fourth year, I was like you know that's that's not for me you of know course, I don't like yeah. being home every day so I kinda kind of just stepped away from that I didn't lose yourself. any friends but yeah, yeah I mean and they I think everyone understood it's like oh he clearly knows what he wants to do and yeah. so no one was like you know what are you doing I was, it was pretty pretty easy to see so would you reach Come out as my guest to that networking thing I will you're allowed to be a guest thanks yeah. yeah no I'd love to I'd love to go I met John Loftus actually for a coffee one of the days and whatever day he had told me I think it was out in the Limerick GA yeah thing um, Munster or whatever uh, I couldn't make it so yeah, definitely yeah. I will Do, yeah. I'll come with you someday because I'd love to like I think I think it would be very beneficial like and then just to go back to like if somebody was looking for a mentor yeah okay and outside of a group like that yeah how would you um, my biggest thing and like what I do is I would kind of look be it online or look in businesses at what you may might you what you might aspire to do yeah. you know something who's doing what you're doing okay they might be you know three chapters ahead of you okay reach out to them reach out to them reach Just out go to them. for it like. yeah people are so yeah. people are much more willing to give time than, than you think yeah. you know i've often like I, I was a king of cold emails that's how i started my business was cold emails what's cold cold so, emails cold okay. emails so like there's no initial hey. interactions like hi my name is on sheehan amazing give me a second okay and then pitch my idea and like if you've time for a coffee i'd love it and okay. if it, I, I i get that quite a bit now because I, I do put it out there like yeah okay. i often say if anyone yeah. wants a hand give me a shout so and do, do you you go and you always. meet people and always, you give always, them always, always. i suppose it will come back eventually 100%. and like what you're saying with like people in different chapters yeah. and stuff like that like i suppose if you're willing to kind of pass on what Absolutely, you were yeah. told to somebody else and then they're on the way up and yes, then it'll yeah, go back yeah. around and like I'm, I'm only 23 so I don't have yeah. tons of experience or 23 but Owen I have done quite a bit and my life has been pretty insane where I've done mm. different things yeah uh, so I, I have a good bit of and all I can ever give is my is my two yeah. cents like you know yeah. I'm never going to someone being like you have to do this this and this yeah. whereas I meet someone being like I actually did something like this a while back I made a balls of this because of this. Okay. You know, I burnt out very badly last yeah. year because I didn't focus on my sleep or my yeah. my well being. So yeah. all I can so do is so you you learned just, from yeah that. exactly. I, I've learned the hard way numerous That's times. Amazing. So if I can tell someone else to not do it, yeah yeah yeah, it's a positive thing. You know. That's fab. Okay, well if anyone needs to hit you, yeah up, do yeah. Show you me, know. Yeah. Um, I suppose look, there was a couple of questions that I had for you. Yeah sure. Um, and I suppose one of them was, have you heard of ghost kitchens? I sure have. How yeah. do you know about that? I know. I know. I just thought it was so interesting. So, like, will you explain what ghost kitchens yeah, well, are? Yeah, we're, we, we, I'm a ghost kitchen in a way. Yeah. Um, ghost kitchens are basically these industrial kitchens that use a third party delivery app okay. to facilitate a restaurant. Yeah. So, for example, I own a kitchen in Bally Simon. Okay. It's in an industrial estate. Mm-hmm. It's a room a third of the size of this. Okay. Just the kitchen. Uh, I'm on Uber Eats hopefully yeah. on Just Eat soon I so they facilitate that. the orders and the deliveries now I have my own website too where okay. our, a lot of our orders come through yeah. but basically we're a restaurant with no seats no waiting staff Amazing. no overheads just the kitchen Okay. and we just have a stop point where Uber Eats will come take the food and deliver so I go, yeah, Ghost Kitchen is that but then again and that's I suppose one of our expansion plans for the next six months is to increase that model so okay yeah either more so kitchens or more menus this so this is something that i like i saw that you were on uber eats because i was ordering mcdonald's and i saw your health class so i was like all oh, right but i it really stood out because i was like fucking hell like fair play to him mm. like you're on Uber Eats. It's so unexpected. It's so innovative, really. Yeah, it was the thing, Because yeah. of what you're doing. And you're on Uber Eats, which is like, it's becoming such, it is becoming a trend for yeah. restaurants to get onto it. And I suppose with that, can I ask you, has it increased the awareness of the brand? And yeah. is it to increase the awareness of the brand or is it to increase the orders? Uh, initially, it was purely awareness. Okay. They came to me wow. um, because there's no healthy options. Okay. So luckily again, People in Uber knew who I was. Yeah. The call was put out, so we need, we need healthy options. Mm-hmm. Some lovely person said, yeah. Oh, she in Country Munch, they do that. Yeah. So they reached out to me. Um, initially, it actually wasn't going to work because we're the only people on it that do cold food as well. It okay. has to be hot food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they came to me saying, you know, you can do it, but it has to be served hot. And I said, no. I goes, that's not what we do. Of course. Um, we're chilled uh, to be reheated. 
So they went away, I went away. Three months, about, about two months later, they came back saying we spoke to the legal team, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. It's, it's okay. Once it's wow. really labelled, and if you go on a bridge, it's see country it. munch, it tubby reheated. All has to be reheated, yeah. 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 So that's, that's the... I know this thing, That's the loophole. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I suppose, so obviously brand awareness was the first Yeah, it was. I, it. I really didn't think it would take off. Um, okay. Just because I, when I think of Uber Eats with Just Eat, yeah. it's pizza, it's burgers, yeah. it's McDonald's. You're hung over, you're like, Exactly, hey, yeah. yeah. It's, it's convenience. But yeah. it's the way that, that food is going, yeah. you know? I, I really think, like, restaurants and, and stuff like that yeah. are, and they are being affected. I mean, Completely. like, unfortunately, the two vegan restaurants in Limerick are I both know. closed down. I actually had one of the guys, um, Kevin Coyley Jr., coming yeah. on. Um, he came on and spoke about veganism and how it's affected his business. And he yeah, said that yeah. people used to walk past and they'd look at the menu and they'd walk away because they yes, were afraid yeah, to yeah. like go into and that And unfortunately, trend, like. a restaurant has set costs. You know, you're paying rent, course, you're paying yourself yeah. to be there. So the ghost kitchen is, is just it, yeah. banging it no, up. Yeah, like. yeah. Um, and then I suppose just with the brand awareness, then has that converted into more uh, it definitely online sales? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. So going back to that, I, initially it's all it was. So I thought, listen, it's good PR regardless. Yeah. You know, the first you're the first company with no restaurant. Mm-hmm. You're you're doing chill food, but uh, no, it has. I mean, Amazing. and thank God, like yeah, there, there has been a spike in sales. It's Fantastic. convenience. Yeah, and yeah, like yeah. Our, our our goal was always. Mm-hmm healthy food can make convenient yeah so this is really it's right on our alley yeah. and for for in terms of business expansion it's it's a beautiful model yeah, to run of course. With. and then i suppose do you guys have set times yeah. that you can order from just eat yeah for you guys because obviously you're not in the kitchen exactly at yeah, 10, yeah, 11 yeah, yeah. At night. so like our model is it, it works off our main our, our hq our fridge in fit 100 the gym there okay so that fridge is stocked that fridge has a tablet with it at reception right so order comes in bing you pull it from the fridge tie the bag your man comes and takes it uh so the opening hours of the gym would determine the opening hours of the restaurant okay. for now but yeah hopefully next few scale. weeks we'll have one in Limerick city and blah, and blah, blah. so i suppose bringing that element of scalability into the business right yeah and obviously you're good at what you do and you've been managing really really well and like this is this is a whole new aspect that has the potential to go really really big yeah i think so yeah so yeah. I suppose, how are you handling those changes within your business? Is it kind of, did you plan for this and are no. you okay? Or are you kind of like, oh my <laughs> God. <freaking> <laughs> yeah, like, are you like going to hire more people or are you just going to change your methods um, during the day? Yeah, I, it definitely wasn't planned. Nothing okay. I've ever done has been planned. Love and it. I, I don't think it should be. I yeah. think you put yourself out there. You, If you know what you want to do, yeah. you're passionate about it, you yeah. go for it, put it out in the ether, and if it's meant to be, it'll, it'll work out. I heard a really good thing just before you go on. It's like throwing paint at the wall and exactly. whatever sticks. Exactly, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So I've been throwing paint for the last <laughs> yeah. four or five years, you know? Yeah. Um, I know you, you just have to learn to adapt with it. So, yeah. again, like I might try four or five different things, mm-hmm. not to a full extent, but I, again, like I'll throw paint yeah. and this i can obviously i can see okay this is something good this so you pull on that yeah uh yeah we, we applied for our second round of investment last week so yeah. hopefully that will come in so with that will come more staff that's so uh, exciting more expansion more kitchens and yeah. hopefully go national as fast as we can wow. and would you ever be would you ever have the seats and bums and the i think down the line for sure yeah, line, yeah yeah but again like with that the bigger brand goes yeah. you know like it's it's pretty common in the states or mm-hmm. it's coming into london now as well is you have a ghost kitchen like this where you just have a brand like Country Munch it is a brand yeah. mm-hmm. uh, and you do it for a few years and you build such a hype like the likes of, of KFC or McDonald's that when you do eventually open up a place you know, people are going to know are your brand they're going to yeah. come straight whether away. it's on Sheen or whether it's Country Munch I don't know so would you see yourself as like a young Jamie Oliver that's the plan yeah okay so so I suppose let's talk about your role models in food or do you have any or do you just yeah I do I do um, Jamie will be a big one for sure yeah yeah uh, He's the person I used to watch when I was younger when, I, when he cooked. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I suppose but he's, he's content and his strategy yeah. in marketing is brilliant too. So yeah. I would definitely pull a lot, of, a lot of inspiration from him. Yeah. Don Skeen is an Irish one. He's great. He's fab. Yeah. Um, there's tons. There's tons. I suppose I, I'm kind of different in the case where a lot of them start off and then they have an avenue of a restaurant, whatever. Whereas I was the opposite. I started with a business and then I branched off into this kind of chef. Yeah. Whereas usually it's the chef starts and then he gets his limelight and then he opens the kitchen to, to capitalize on it. And so, did you ever do any cooking courses? Like where? No. No, so like, is it instinct? Um, do you I would like say put so, a bit yeah. in and taste a bit and then? Oh, like, for sure. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Cooking is an art. You know, baking okay. is a science. Yeah. 
So yeah. the more you do, the better you get. I traveled a lot. I lived in Malta for eight months. Wow. I traveled to uh, like Italy, Sicily, Bulgaria, Greece, Dubai, Amazing. all the time yeah. with food. You know, okay. uh, that was one of my first ever like food endeavors. Was I would go on to TripAdvisor. Okay. I would copy all of the email addresses from the local restaurants. Amazing. Send a cold email to all of them, blind copied, saying I'm a food blogger. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be in your city next it's week. so bold. I love it. Yeah, and then can I come in and do a video? So I started like a, a YouTube series called Munching Malta. So I went all around Malta. That's I know I was amazing. broke. So really? I, I needed free food, basically. Oh my God. So I, but I made contents, got to eat for free. Yeah. And kind of it gave me the wheels then to yeah. go to... I did in Italy, I did in Bulgaria, Dubai. Oh, class. and that's amazing. <laughs> it was ridiculous, yeah. That's amazing. And so like, I suppose what you're saying, like that wasn't planned. That was no. literally survival. Yeah, that was, it was necessary. But it turned into... I remember I had minus 37 quid in my account. And I was like, geez, I am in a bad way here. <laughs> like, I need, yeah. to, I need to eat. So I was like, so and I was, was already doing like, I was already doing a lot of YouTube videos, just, you know, Mickey yeah. Mouse stuff. Yeah. But I was like, listen, I come in, I'll do a video for you. It's yeah. a free advertisement for you. I don't want any money. I actually, I didn't ask for free food, Yeah. but they all did. If, yeah, if they had asked me to pay, yeah. I would have paid. Yeah, uh, yeah, I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't bold enough to say I want free food, yeah. but I'll make a video and they'd always be like, yeah, you know, listen, it's so the house. Cute. But you know, the good thing is, like, and I would be the same when I came in, like, they were like, oh, you have to try this. You have to try this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would get like five Stuffed. dinners. I used to be rolled out of those places. Like, <laughs> yeah. I used to be like, can I take this home? And that would do me for like three days. That's then as amazing. Well. Like, People are like, oh, like, you have to try our, it's our best dish. This is our best dessert. That's and so like, good. Like, like, of, of course I'm going to try dessert. And yeah. Like, yeah. Who, who are you talking to? And come here, I saw um, Chris Kelly. Yeah. So Chris is a very good friend of mine. And Chris. Yeah, likewise. Chris is, what, 23? He is, yeah, 22, 22. 23. I think he's younger. Yeah. Than he's and scary. Chris, like, Chris owns his own company, obviously, Trackworks, and I saw that he was helping you with your grant application yeah. um, at the weekend. Chris and found the country once with me. Yeah, I know, yeah. I know. And, like, just, I suppose, just even to, like, mention him, like, he has, from that day that we met in that car yeah. for the last three years, Chris has been kind of in my life for about four years, and literally, if there's ever anything, no matter what it is, Mm -hmm. that I have a question to ask about business or like people or who to meet, how to do things. He is just the man he is, to yeah, go yeah, to. Yeah, like, yeah. Do you know? He's a gent. He's an absolute gent. Yeah, he's And fab. again, he practices the way he preaches. He's very good at what he does. Yeah. And he's always, always like yeah. that. He knows, he yeah. knows exactly what's up. Like, And he's, yeah. he's just like this 40-year-old... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. man in this 22 year old's yeah. body just killing life yeah, like yeah. and you're just like fair play to you um okay so we did put up um you put up a question box on yeah. your instagram so i suppose maybe if we just go into those questions Shoot. and just Shoot. answer yeah, them yeah, yeah. um so i suppose name a dish that matches your personality oh man dessert because i'm sweet oh there you go <laughs> there you go actually do you do desserts um no we have protein balls or power okay. balls we do them what um, do you make them with they are like dates honey peanut butter okay. uh, cacao powder and they're rolled in desiccated coconut oh yeah yeah really so nice. they're homemade really nice absolutely. oh yeah everything's homemade yeah oh my yeah. god okay uh, yeah. and we've like new menus coming in september so there'll be a few sweet treats in them as well okay so with new menus and stuff like that like i know you don't go with trends mm. but how do you develop your new menus um, a lot of it is based off what customers want. Okay. So we will have done a lot of polls in the last few weeks asking people what they, yeah. firstly, what they want to keep. Yeah. So because I wanted to just scrap the whole menu and start fresh. Yeah. Um, but there was big complaints saying like, no, you can't take the feeder off or you can't take the bolognese off. Okay. So we did that. We So we'll keep two, we'll keep those two and then we'll we'll replace everything else. Okay. But that's the beauty of like, what we do. We can constantly rotate, you know. Of course. I always keep the menu small. Yeah. Keep it for like four months and then change it again. And so with the Instagram Instagram polls is what you use, yeah. Yeah. And like, do you find that they're really helpful super, with regards super to super helpful? Yeah, yeah. Because market like, research. I I would think a lot of our traffic comes through our socials. Yeah. Uh, there there is there is direct direct traffic for not and from various PR places like, but yeah. Instagram will be a huge one for us. Uh, and it is because they're our customers, you know. So they're they're watching what we do. They're they're supporting, you know, a, a, lo the a local that business. Keep you alive, yeah. Like. So I mean, I can see the people who are commenting are the people who I see the orders coming in wow. so if they're saying oh we'd love to see this you know obviously you're going yeah. to do it yeah. so would you do vegetarian options yes yeah yeah okay. the plan is the plan is, is to have a full a full menu for it okay uh, good. We, I've done it we started with a vegetarian option we brought in vegan options yeah it unfortunately just didn't vegan just didn't is sell. just so specific though yeah like vegetarian I think 
is definitely more people are even that that aren't vegetarian are open to veggie dishes and stuff like that like yeah yeah so sure. like you know it would be good to see a vegetarian i'd love thing. to i mean and yeah. every time we did it they would sell but unfortunately with a business like this you know you need x quantity to make it like, yeah. to make it worthwhile yeah you know you can't be doing 40 bolognese 40 mm-hmm. curry 40 fida two vegetarian curry mm-hmm. you know it's it, it uh, of course, the, yeah. the playoff isn't there but i i, I do think down the line there will be a, a menu yeah a, a purely vegan or vegetarian menu whatever it may be yeah because there is a market for it for sure yeah no it there just, is it just needs to be done right well i think even like when i met kevin um from the underdog the vegan cafe yeah. it was when i was really sick at the time and i they were telling me that i needed to change my diet and stuff like that and yeah then i i went into kevin and i was like i literally cried i was like <laughs> i'm so hungry and i just don't know what i can eat <laughs> literally and i'd never met the man before yeah, yeah. he sat down with me he's like look I want you to go home and he was like I want you to watch a thing called Forks Over Knives have mm. you seen that? no I haven't seen it but I've, I've, I've oh, heard of it if you take anything from today you need to go home and watch I it I never watched Netflix no know. do you know what right it's I suppose it wasn't like oh be vegetarian be vegetarian yeah. but it just actually explained I suppose to me what some meats can do or yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. like my condition or whatever it's an inflammatory condition mm-hmm. And like some meats can actually like push Feed the inflammatory. well no it can actually like be pro-inflammatory so yes, it'll yeah, like yeah. it'll make you inflamed yeah. even more so um yeah it just really like okay, I'll, I'll opened my it. mind but you know what i mean I'm so a that beef, is we're a beef farmer as well I sorry <laughs> killing it. Like, no but like but i, no, still, but, I yeah. do still eat meat every now and again but it definitely completely changed my perception of yeah. I suppose what I was eating. I and have this conversation like that. every week, and yeah. that alone is proof yeah. that the times are changing. You know. Yeah. Uh, and I agree. I I, I do think yeah. we should have one meat-free day, um, yeah. a week. Yeah. I, I agree. I personally wouldn't be able to cut out meat. Yeah. Just because I it, it, I have it, no that's problems your thing, with it. Like, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. If I was having issues, yeah. of course I would. Yeah. I know I have friends who are vegan and vegetarians. Yeah. Very happy how they eat. I have nothing against it. Of course. Um. Actually, can I ask you though? Yeah. So you're a beef farmer. Yeah. Tell me what's going on with that tell me what's going on with the government and the, yeah it's like, been a lot of a lot yeah of like is recently. there is there any like info because i just see it everywhere and beef farmers are definitely at a loss for yeah, whatever there was, reason there was like a, a, a bad trade exchange recently with the brazil and the eu so the brazil are allowed to export into the eu now which will take away from the irish economy because the irish export for beef is huge the yeah, irish has we've one of the best beef in the world without it's a doubt the, the pope they, they, no, no, no. <laughs> the the Vatican. Vatican. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm just not really religious. But anyway, the I Vatican. Um, they actually take all their beef from Ireland. Yeah. Oh, order, it's yeah. all over the world. And even like when I yeah. travelled, you know, they would on the menus would be the highlight would like oh Irish Angus beef or yeah. whatever it may be. It's it's massive. You know, yeah. they, and it's it's a huge part of of the Our Irish economy, in, Irish infrastructure. And yeah, yeah, the Irish economy. And that's one of uh, not one of my arguments, but when people say why can't we just stop eating meat yeah it's not a case of you know it's it's better or worse for your health it's a case of it's a huge part of our economy yeah so if you're gonna cut that out you have to replace with something yeah. and the argument where you just replace with crops and plants isn't not sufficient because the the ground might be might be suitable for it the okay. quantity might be able yeah. to do the quantity of beef so there's it's a huge part and it's yeah it's it's, it's a big a big so issue it is now. it is a thing like you oh, know it is for sure yeah that yeah, like yeah, obviously more people down. are becoming vegetarian and vegan and then obviously the beef farmers are out there trying to yeah well that's their trade i mean that's their bread and butter yeah, like you have farmers you know? all over Ireland beef yeah and um with this new trade exchange in, in the eu you know yeah. that's, that's a huge chunk of the market taken up by cheaper meats from brazil yeah being pumped in here Okay. Just this, and there's a lot of politics, and it's it's yeah. the it's the it's the benefit the German car industry. It's weird. It's 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 a really benefit weird benefit the German yeah, car yeah. industry. It's, it's like Mercedes and BMW and all that kind of stuff. It's 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 crazy. That's I, I, just I, I'd, total recommend, I'd recommend looking into it. Yeah, no, I will because I like I love stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, and just yeah, to yeah. know what's going on, but yeah, I, I know that there was just a lot of them out, like, yeah. things going on, but I didn't yeah. know exactly what it was. Uh, another dish of probably my personality. I would say something Irish because I'm like yeah, you're Irish right. homegrown from a small farm yeah. in House Kenry. Yeah. Ma'am Stew or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's just, I'd I actually love the The best thing, like, I yeah. Had that pull the family so together, a stew on the table, everyone yeah. just pulls as they wish. Then, like. And so at home, like, do you cook? Uh, not. I cook for myself a lot and 
uh, I will do dinner for the family time to time. Not a whole pile though. Mam's yeah. a great cook, mm-hmm. and I find like I'm the worst in the kitchen. If I'm in the kitchen, yeah, I have to be kind of hands on. Yeah, I find yeah, it yeah. very hard to, to to let her take yeah. free reign. And not even that. I mean, like it's uh, even in college. Yeah, I was always the cook, and the yeah. boys would clean because yeah, yeah, yeah. I would be in the kitchen. Yeah. and it's like this is what I do every day. So I'm of watching. Course one of the lads fry yeah. something or grill something and I'm like no man like, this is how you, do it. you need to have more oil you need to season yeah, yeah, that yeah. better I'll taste it like you need salt they're like oh just get out of the kitchen like you're wrecking our heads so on that how like right, I watched your RTE um, it was what was it Six we're doing the salmon um, yeah. salmon and rock and couscous yeah so you were baiting on the everyone says that you know you yeah. were you were like <laughs> <laughs> yeah a little bit more a little bit more so like how do you know because like there was no measurements there wasn't no. like oh whatever so yeah, how yeah, do you yeah. know what to uh, put in I, I, I do it every day so yeah. you know yourself but i will say on that yeah especially irish people were so yeah. hesitant to seasonings Ooh. and to spices mm-hmm. um best you can do is is you know add more add more add more you know then when it's too much you know yeah, you yeah, know yeah. you leave something like, okay that is too much yeah for next time yeah, yeah. so t- taper back down but and again so, if you were to saw two dishes yeah. And I was to season one properly and unseason the other. You yeah. think they're two different dishes altogether. Really? Yeah. And Salt. so, like with spices and seasons and all that kind of stuff, like they're actually really good for you as well. Like, there's so yeah, much yeah, health yeah, benefits yeah, yeah. in them. Yeah, like turmeric. Turmeric, yeah. Oh big anti inflammatory. Really, really good for you. That's one of the herbs. I actually I take herbal remedies. Yeah. And that's actually one of the like predominant herbs that I take. And I stuff. drink uh, turmeric tea. It's from oh, China. Oh, fab. So good. Sorry, really, really nice. Where did you get it from China? Did you like order it online? Uh, I have a friend who orders it. I'll try and get you a box of it. There you go now. Turmeric um, tea from yeah. China. It's very good Fab. though. And it's really yeah. good for you. No caffeine. But it is, yeah. Yeah, I actually need to cut back on the caffeine. Like, so do I. Do you, yeah, do you drink a lot Love of coffee? coffee. Yeah. yeah. I lo- There's I, a chocolate I, latte. What's this about? Uh, oh, no, no, don't mind that. It's just, <laughs> no. it's just Dave's thing. <laughs> You're like best pals, aren't you? Yeah, he put in a good shift for me there, yeah. But like, questions. so like, how did your relationship come about? Like, was it kind of? <laughs> yeah, we're talking about Dave. Grant no, but but like he's always in your stories. And he stuff. is, yeah, no, we're, we're 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 good friends, yeah. And he works out in the gym, and yeah, so I, I met him. We joined with Fit One Hundred. Okay. Country Munch. Dave is a PT there. Fantastic. Uh, I just met him there last year, and we just oh, clicked. Wow. Yeah, we just clicked. Two um, busy mates. Now yeah, like. we we have similar humor. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. He loves food. I love food. He loves coffee. I love coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you always go for coffee. Yeah, yeah. We get him. I mean, I'm lucky, and 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 in a sense that like. I'm very free mm-hmm. with my time during the day. I'm like I've yeah. no, I don't have set hours. Yeah. I just have. I need to get this done today. Yeah. I get it done today. It doesn't yeah. matter how long it takes or what mm-hmm. time it's done. Yeah. Usually, I like, often yeah. there are. I am time dependent on some things. Mm-hmm. And Dave is sinner. Dave's a PT. Mm-hmm. So he might have a client from like 11, 12, 12 to one. He's free from two to four. So I'll yeah. be free. So listen, drink coffee. And he's usually the only person there because everyone so else is like, either working or yeah, yeah, else, yeah. So we're two kind of freelance people that can always. That's amazing. It's easy to have like yeah. Fab. Okay, I'm gonna go right. to one of the other questions. You also that plug now as well. Yeah, what's your career? <laughs> what can you do? Um, so work-life balance, and I suppose that's kind of what you touched on there. Yeah. So just like, do you have a work-life balance? Like, what no. do you do to like de-stress? Like, do you do yoga? I feel like you do yoga. I feel like you be doing like <laughs> headstands or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not good at that. I'm not good at, okay. at work-life balance. Um, okay. my thing is intense periods of work and then Dead a time. complete debrief i usually have to leave the country i i, I can't okay. like i was supposed to be off wednesday this week yeah because i'm working a lot of weekends now with demos and mm-hmm. a lot of things are booked up which takes up saturdays and sundays so I, before i would have been brutal i would have been like just fucking power on yeah. it doesn't matter because you know when you're when you own a business and things are growing and growing and growing you're caught up in that of you're course, like this is class yeah. the more i work and you have to the more i work the more i grow yeah. the more money we make super all good but then like last year I burnt out really, really badly. Tell me about that. Um, if you want. Yeah, that's no, fine. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I like telling. I tell everyone the story because yeah. it was the biggest eye opener for me. Okay. Um, we took on a huge contract. We were just open now. We were open about two months. Yeah. And um, we got. I won't say who was with or anything like that. We got offered a massive contract, like big, big money now, like well over six figures. Wow. Um, and but it was way beyond what we were doing. I just happened to be in the right place, at the right time. I mm-hmm. talked a big game. Mm-hmm. I knew we couldn't do it, but I was like, "Fuck it, I'll figure it out." Like yeah. that's my key phrase. Yeah, I, I'll figure it out. That's Richard Branson. Every day, yeah. is it? Yeah. Yeah, he oh, says. Fuck 
fuck's sake. No, but he... Okay, no, I, I was, and do you know what? It's so funny. I had a so tattoo funny. planned to get that on my body. It's so funny because <laughs> I actually was looking through um, an old journal. Like, I have my little business yeah, journal. So, yeah, so, And I had a little quote in there. It was only last night that I saw it, and it was from Richard Branson. And it said, um, say yes to everything, figure it out later. Okay. So, yeah, sorry, Bastard. go on. Burn out. I Tell me. I speak to Branson. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I, I took it. Uh, I was like, we'll figure it out, boys. It's fine. Mm-hmm. I'll say, boys, it was just me. So I hired like eight staff. Um, started production. We were doing like 400 kilos of food right. uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Fridays. Mm-hmm. I used to work. I started at six. Delivery would go. Would work until 12 that night. Work, right. Oftentimes, we worked till four. I'd sleep in the kitchen for two hours and we'd go Good again then. Job. I did that for right. about three months, okay. four months maybe. Um like I knew I was exhausted. I knew it wasn't. I knew it wasn't good. But I would always, always tell myself like, it'll be better next week. Yeah. I'll fi- I'll fix it next week. Like I just get it done now. Of course. And you you get, you get caught in that rat race of mm-hmm. fix what's here now. Yeah. Plan later on. Yeah. Whereas I was working completely in the business rather than being able to step back and work of on course. the business, which yeah. is what I'm able to know. I mean, if you run a business, you shouldn't really be stuck in it. You should be yeah. outside it, watching it, mm-hmm. saying this is good, this is bad. We're yeah. gonna do this next week. We'll mm-hmm. do this. We'll do this. But uh, I was just, I was stuck. And I remember sitting in the kitchen at like two in the morning. Chris was there. Yeah. He was part of the business at that stage. Yeah. He, like in fairness to him, he was in the kitchen with me. Film was there. Wow. And it was just, I remember looking at the lads and saying like, lads, I'm, I'm, I can't get out of this. I can't, this. I can't get out of this. Like yeah. I'm stuck. Plowed, plowed on. Um, I had a massive emotional breakdown. Yeah. Just woke up one morning. I didn't want to go to work, which was the biggest eye opener for me. Yeah. I was like, this something's wrong here. Like I didn't want to get out of bed. Like. Got to work with the lads started crying mm-hmm. don't know why mm-hmm. just started crying uh just overwhelmed with emotion completely yeah had to go do do the shop anyway so mm-hmm. i did the whole day's work crying everyone's like see you're right i'm fine just keep working <laughs> like, i'm okay i'm okay i'm okay i had like injuries my i, hurt, I injured my shoulder from mm. chopping motion i yeah. would chop for like four or five hours yeah so i had really bad imbalances in my body um got home that night like to man got home like 12 my, my, I feel bad like, my family were worried like I used to never see them like yeah. so my mum would like wait up she's right came home bawling and crying um, so that was like a week period where I was just like I think I need to pull out of this like because yeah. number one I was I was ill like I was getting really mm-hmm. sick mm-hmm. my immune system was shutting down yeah. and I never get sick like I'm, yeah. I'm, I haven't been sick properly in years and years mm-hmm. and years um, I was exhausted I had no motivation at all I wanted to just put her on a towel yeah so I said, yeah, fuck it. I, I went into that business. I said, we're, we're stopping the contract. Yeah. Um, because I would have lost Country Munch. Fair play to you, though. Because we were, we were still getting orders for mm-hmm. Country Munch, which was what I started. You know, I completely left. It, this, what the contract was nothing got to do with Country Munch. It was like so just you food t- production. So you went away from your Yeah, I, I was losing that. And Customers were ordering. They were prepaying on the website. Yeah. I couldn't fulfill the orders. Yeah. So I was having to refund people every week. And they yeah. were kind of saying, listen, like, what's going yeah. on? So I again I took and I'm I'm glad I did it and it, yeah. for a twenty year old to be able to do it or twenty one year old say we're going to pull away from this money of course go back to a business that was struggling mm-hmm. because I had neglected it mm-hmm. it took me I, it definitely took me the bones two months to get out of that rut yeah uh, just exhausted man that's incredible exhausted though. but yeah that's thankfully incredible. got out of it put my time back into what I originally had what I was passionate about. And got it back up and running again. And decided to yeah. take a bit of you time. And exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm better at that now. But again, I, I do, just because of that, I know what the feeling now. You know you're. I know, I know. I'm, I'm, that I'm on point. the threshold. Yeah. Yeah. So like I'll say, okay, Grant, I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling it coming. I, I, I've never gotten to that stage. And I never will get to that stage again. Touch wood. Um, but I'll be like, Grant, cool. Yeah. I'm out of here. So I'll book a weekend away abroad, so I can't work. Because if, okay. if I'm in Limerick or if I'm you in went, Ireland, I tend to be work. answering the phone. So my work is it marks so on my phone. You know, social media yeah. is, is a big part of my work. Of Phone calls, whatever, emails. Yeah. So uh, you live and learn. Yeah. Yeah. So big time. Just to round that off. I do yoga as well. <laughs> I do yoga too. Do you ever go to the we, one in the I've, market? I've seen you. I've seen you yeah. at the market. Yeah. Oh Upstairs. shit! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I love it. I Very actually good. haven't been in ages. Though, Neither so have I. I said last time I was there, I saw you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same time. Um, okay. So if anyone wants to find you, what's yeah. your handle? On Instagram. Uh, at underscore Owen Sheehan. Okay. And then for Country Munch? At Country Munch. Okay. And that's easy. Easy as that, yeah. Okay. Fab. And um, like for mentoring questions or where to start and all that kind of stuff. Like yeah, you don't you, mind. I mean, yeah. It's easy to find me on Instagram or if you go to yeah. our website, 
or in my emails there. Or it'll be on RT. Or on, or on TV. Like a little star. Yeah. yeah. Fab. Okay, well, thanks so much for coming today. <laughs> my absolute pleasure. Thanks Brilliant. so much. No problem. Thanks. Ciao.